Hey guys, well I just returned from Saint Denis and the Basilica there which is the final resting place for just about every king of France for the last 1500 years or so with the exception, if I understand this correctly, of three of them. Uh, it also includes uh, the final resting place of a few queens, although I think most of the queens are buried somewhere else. I don't know. Look it up on Wikipedia. Save me some time. There's 1,500 years worth of kings. That's a lot of information to try and retrain, uh, to retain in this old brain of mine. Anyway, uh, some interesting notes about the Basilica. Uh, it's not that far from Paris. Uh, it's, uh, you can take line 13 of the metro out there and get off and you're pretty much right there. Uh, the building, the Basilica itself, is not all that impressive as compared to other churches in the Paris area or in France in general or Europe in general. However, it does have some really cool things uh, to note about it. One of them is that the choir area of the church, or what's called the choir, was the very, very, very first time that anything was built in the Gothic style. This is where it started. This is where it exploded upon the scene throughout Europe, and um, architecturally, uh, it's something of great uh, note. Now, also, uh, of course, for those of you who are interested in some of the more recent happenings in France, meaning the last two or three hundred years, uh, and specifically we're talking about Marie Antoinette and Louis XVI, who got their heads chopped off, uh, they are, or their final, uh, their remains are there in their final resting place. Um, now, when you go to the Basilica, uh, I think I posted a picture of me in front of a couple of marble statues there, which is like a little a memorial area inside the church for Marie Antoinette and Louis XVI. That's not, uh, that's not their tombs. That's not their sarcophagi. They are actually buried in the crypt below, as are the remains of just about most of the kings uh, who were buried there. During the French Revolution, the peasants came in and burned the entire abbey area around the church. The church itself was unharmed. However, they dug up the remains of all the royals, threw them in a pit, coated them with lime, and hoped that they would just dissolve into nothing. However, some people came along, apparently a little later on, they tried to recover them, but mostly what they got were bones. And so they did kind of like what they did in the ossuary and the catacombs in Paris. And they took all the bones, they collected them together, they put them in the crypt, and they have a list of all the kings that they think that that represents. Uh, of course, they didn't know whose bones were whose. Uh, by that time, it was just a big jumble. You can't see the bones like you can in the catacombs because they're sealed. However, there's a list of all the kings. That's a long list, by the way, because we're talking 15. 1,500 years of kings, and some of those kings might have served a couple of years or 10 years or whatever, so you can tell that's a lot. Um, Marie Antoinette and Louis XVI, their remains are in the crypt. I took some video of it. I think you'll be able to spot the inscriptions on Louis XVI's uh, tomb. It's a marble slab. Uh, you can see that. Uh, Marie Antoinette, there's a marble slab to the left and in the middle um, that uh, I zoomed in on. I, I don't know if you can read any of the inscription. It was so dark, but that's where her remains are. Now, of course, Louis uh, and Marie, they did the same thing, threw them in a pit, threw lime over it. Uh, some people came along later and tried to save the remains, but all they found of the king were some bones and kind of gruesome, but uh, from what I've heard described from Marie Antoinette, all they found was like a little bit of a silk garter, and what they described is a mass of gray organic matter. Uh, pretty bad. And they saved it, however, and it is her remains, and they are buried there in the crypt as well as the king. Uh, now, if you go there, be aware it's pretty dark down there, so if you have a camera, make sure it's a really good one. You have a light, or if you have a camcorder, you have a light. As I think you can tell by my video, I had trouble getting the images because that area is very, very dark. There's also an area of the crypt down below that's called the primitive area. Dates back almost 1,500 years, and these were some of the original sarcophagi and graves of, of kings and notables that were buried there back in the 5th and 6th century. And So, so it's really an interesting place. The uh, statuary up above uh, in the church itself. I really doubt and I don't think that there's actually any remains in any of those. There might have been many, many years ago before the revolution, but as I noted, 
all the remains were taken out of there and buried and, and uh, you know, lime put on them to try and destroy the body. So uh, what you see, the statuary, is maybe where they originally might have been, but they're not there anymore. I think most of the remains are down in the crypt itself. So it's really an interesting place. If you're in Paris, uh, it's worth a visit. It's eight and a half euros to get into the tomb area of the church. The church itself is free. It's pretty. Uh, it has some beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, stained glass windows. Um, again, the church itself doesn't measure up to other churches in Europe uh, necessarily, but historically it's really uh, a very interesting place to visit. And I recommend it. So enjoy the video if you can. Hope it's not too boring. It's like a history lesson, like you're back in school again.
La première chose, la première décision qui a été prise 